Ladies and gentlemen, it is your host, Prisoner Millions, Andre Norman, and we are in the building yet again, and we have a phenomenal guest all the way from New Jersey. Well, actually, I'm all the way in New Jersey, but she's from New Jersey. I'm saying none other than the fabulous. I'm saying all dropping. I'm saying shut it down. <laughs> Hold it down. Hold you down. CG is in the building. Listen, the, the intros, thank you. Thank you. And you are in my stomping grounds in New Jersey. So welcome. Oh, yeah. Thank you for having me. Oh, listen, how can I not have you? Yeah. I was not sending you up the building when I saw you. <laughs> I was like, nah, something like that. Nah, she can go. Come back later. No problem. I'm like, nah, she's going on set now. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. I'm saying beautiful black women are not to be I'm saying discredited, overlooked. Thank you. Thank you. That first of all, to even hear you, a black man, say that. So that's all we want. Like that's all it's good to hear. I didn't say we. Don't go with we. I said I you. always speak for us. I us speak ain't for here. Us. Well, for me. For me. Yeah. Thank you. Own your <laughs> no no Cody fitness. I learned my lesson. I just do that by habit. I just defend I and used stand to up for us. Yeah. I did the we thing and I got 14 years. I don't do the we thing. All right. I hear you. I, I hear do the you. me thing. I hear you. You have the right to do what you want to do, and I just say, yo. Phenomenal sister in the building. I was like, she's on set. I didn't even care that your chair was higher than mine. I was like, <laughs> I said, leave <laughs> I her up. I said, leave her on the pedestal. I did not even notice no, no. that. You needed to be on the pedestal. So I was like, well, let, me, let me see if I can go down some more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that for there to be up. Yep. Thank you. So we are in your town. Mm -hmm. We are on your platform. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming to Prison of Millions. This podcast is going across the nation. Texas, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Georgia, New York. You know We're going nationwide. California. Big. We're up in the Dakotas. That's big. And they get to hear who CG is. Congratulations to you. For, for finding you? No, yeah, Dev yeah. found you. Yeah. You did a great job. Thanks, Dev. For reaching you all those people. Here. Reaching all those people. No, nah, we got to reach the people. Mm -hmm. My thing is, I used to run prison to prison, okay. jail to jail. Center to center, talking as much as I could. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal story. I go, 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 go. In a year, if I spoke once a day to 1,000 people, mm -hmm. that's 365,000 people at the end of the year. I can make this one video in the next 40 minutes and hit 500,000. Yeah. And have the rest of the year to do me. Mm -hmm. Or come hang out with you. That's right. <laughs> That's the power of the internet. Absolutely. You reach so many people. They're time. not technically on the internet, but yet. Okay. Yeah, everywhere, though. Now, let's keep it 100. I was like, what do you do? <laughs> she <laughs> said, oh, I have a dance studio. Mm -hmm. I said, who's in the dance studio? What did you tell me? Well, first you started talking about battling. That's the first thing you said. You started about dancing. I used to battle myself. <laughs> yeah, you asked what, what type of dance I do. You asked about the studio and what's in there, so... And I started explaining that information to you. And then you said... I'm coming to the studio. There's a building full of beautiful black women dancing. I'm showing up. And you said, battling. <laughs> I saw more. I used to battle. I was one of the Boston's original right. breakers, break dancers. I love that. When it came out, I was a break dancer. Okay. Way back in the 80s. That's... Planet Rock, shout out. I don't forget who made it. <laughs> but, but once you break, you can't... You, you still know how to do it. I'm 55. I can't break dance anymore. I break something. I, <laughs> I get... I can do this little I, I love that. But, but I mean, so they come with these little new dances. It's all a break. It's all, it's all a recreation. It's a recreation of what we used to do. They, they, they right. do little pops and stuff. I, That's old. I love it. I can dance. I, I just can't do windmills anymore. Well, I can tell from that that you can dance. So, yeah. You verify. Now, listen, I'm not coming to the studio to dance. I'm coming to the studio to choose up. Well, what? <laughs> I was like, hold up. The studio. <laughs> it's, it's hard out here to find a stable, sane, not fully crazy woman for your life. I don't agree with that. That's why I'm coming to your studio because you said you have them there. Yes, it's, it's not just there, but everywhere. There's a there's there's a, a variety oh. of stable, not crazy women. Do you, class, do you classify yourself as not crazy? I didn't partial? say that. I'm asking. I didn't say. I'm asking. <laughs> um, I have my days. I like ownership, accountability, y'all. We teach accountability in our. Thinking for a change mm -hmm. class, she just broke on it. Right. So how many women come to your studio in an average week? Um, in an average week, I would say, I'll actually break it down by class. Our average class is somewhere between the minimum 10, and can go up to 30 per session. 
And then with multiple sessions during the week, I'd say or about seven sessions during the week. So. And what are the age ranges of the people who show up for your classes? So I have different classes. I have children's classes. I have teens' no, classes. No, no. But adults. for my class, oh, adults. Adults. We're not talking about the kids. From 25 to 78. All in one room, dancing together. That's what you call the come up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> See, what somebody calls a dance class, I call a dating opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Um, it's mixed too because we have you know male and female in there dancing of all age ranges. So yeah, dudes is on their own. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even. Hear you. <laughs> if he's signing for a dance class, he's not looking. Yeah, and that's our, our one male student is the star of the show. I mean, he comes in there, he knows why he's there, and he sits around in the circle and just dances with all women and gets down. And he's seventy, seventy-five, I think. His name is Shout- Willie. Who? Willie. Shout out to Willie for holding it down. He's <laughs> in the building. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. In the building. Mm-hmm. Willie is the star of the show. Willie is the star of the life. We love Willie. We do. We do. This is what this is literally what I teach. This is literally what I teach my guys. If I put you at the corner next to the projects mm-hmm. and you stand out there, there'll be 20 women from the projects who see you mm-hmm. and one of them will like you. And you're gonna have a chick from the projects. Okay. If I put you at a university in the law class, there'll be 20 women there. One of them will like you and you date a lawyer. If I stand you Wherever I put you, it's not about will somebody like you. It's this case, where are you placing yourself? Environment. So I got married once, and I hung out at a university. So guess what? My wife has a PhD mm-hmm. and a master's degree, my ex-wife, because I hung out where the, where the academics were. Mm-hmm. I ended up with academic. I'm going to come to your dance studio. I'm going to end up with a dancer. <laughs> That's a smart It's, That's a it's smart not method. where you get chosen. It's where are you placing yourself to be chosen from. That's a very strategic approach. We don't choose women. Women choose us. I agree with that. We can ask. They'd be like, nah. They, they take you on a couple fake dates, but they already knew it was a no. Yeah, yeah that is You've true. been on a couple fake dates. I, yeah, I have in a day. <laughs> back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day. Back Are back you married now? Um, going through a divorce. Okay, so you get, you, then it's over. Then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then it's over for him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Put him on skates. <laughs> Gotta oh go. my God! Go. Homie, it was nice having you, but your time is up. <laughs> I don't know why I mentioned it. Because I'm saying it's real. Yeah, I went through a divorce. I mean, mm-hmm. It was it was it was good while it lasted, mm-hmm. and then I could say I messed it up, yeah. and I just learned from my mistakes. Absolutely, and move on. That's, that's I think that's one of the things that I took from it, just in part of life, just whatever I could pull from it. Whether it's positive or negative, use that and move it forward. And it's been building me. It's built me. Did you want to slice your tires a couple of times? No, I don't slice tires. <laughs> what do you do? I, I you, ignore. You, you transfers 401k? <laughs> no, I get, you know what my thing is? I, I get silent. You will you won't hear from me. I'll disappear. My whole existence will be disappear. you like, just delete your, delete your profile. Everything. I don't slice tires. I don't, I don't chase. But I, I used to. Okay, right, yeah, so I, 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 I saw it in you. To, I knew it was in I used in to you. hide in bushes and stuff like that. I mean, I'm, oh, ex- I'm exaggerating. No, you're not. I'm exaggerating. No, you're not. <laughs> I'm exaggerating. The question is, did you bring your girls with you or you go solo? No, never. I never I never got to that point. You just thought about it. Yeah, of course. You all think, like, as women, we plan and plot everything. So I've plotted some, you know, assassinations in my mind, but I've never actually come out. And, and... Oh, you wanted, like, Mark to do it. <laughs> I, I thought I was talking about spicy tires. <laughs> this is going too. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting scared up in here. <laughs> Security. I, yeah, I have. I think not just women, you know, men as well. No, no, we have, no, no, no. We have no, no. those. Don't no. start speaking for us. <laughs> don't start speaking. I have not hung in the bushes talking about. Well, okay, I wasn't assassinating no girl because she left me. I wasn't technically in the bush. What were you? Mean, where were you then? I don't know. I was like 18, Near the bushes? 19. No, no, how old you were. Where were you? <laughs> Were you near the bushes? The bushes weren't far from me, but it wasn't that I was... You were in the dark. I, I, yeah, it was nighttime. <laughs> Sounds like an episode of The Wire to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, Marlo, come here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do the whistle. Like, here comes Omar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Omar's coming. Omar's coming. Omar's <laughs> coming. Here comes... <laughs> yeah. I, so you off your Omar days? Yeah. I mean, I, listen... It's not. It's never that serious, ever, ever that serious. You heard that. There's always somebody else, and for me, my somebody else might be at her studio. All right, 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 right. You never know. Yeah, but aside from that, you run a. Is it your business? Yes, it's my business. How long ago did you start your business? 
So I opened my building, my brick and mortar, two years ago, but the business itself is six years old. What did you do before the brick and mortar? Um, I was renting space from other locations, um, teaching outside during the pandemic, doing virtual classes, wherever I could get space is where I was doing my class. Like Zumba, just no, fitness, dance? it's dance, fitness. So the premise is a fitness nightclub. The reason I started it is because I wanted to lose weight and I hate working out. So I remember the only time that I would sweat was when I used to go to the club. I don't club anymore, but I wanted to what? set that environment. I brought you a drink? <laughs> I wanted to what set that environment. What did you drink when you went? I, I'm not, I don't drink. Water? Yeah, water. Oh, yeah. I like that. Like, yeah. yeah. You don't want one of them little crazy fruity drinks that cost me $15. No, no. But I, a bottle of water? I added that whole element to the to the business. So it's a fitness nightclub. We have the live DJ. We turn the lights down. We have the water bar. Um, You can come get water shots, juice shots, or whatever. But you think you're in a nightclub, but you're working out. So the routines are kind of mixed into an exercise workout. But... What's his name? Willie? What was Willie? Willie. Willie can't hold down a whole club by himself. Willie, he does. Willie, co- listen. I How many men you. come to this nightclub scenario? Well, on a regular basis, we probably only have two men that will show up, um, but they're never there at the same time. Jersey, for the most part is women. <laughs> Jersey, y'all are bugging. <laughs> Your marketing is off. You know what it is? Yeah. Your marketing is off. I'm only marketing because if women. you told me there is 50 women in this building nightclub, I just got to buy a juice shot or some water. I'm pulling up. <laughs> well, because they think, you know what, they think that the same thing, that Zumba aspect, then it's not that. When you think about working out with women, a lot of men are like, I don't want to dance. I don't want to feel like I'm battling or doing anything with women. They just, <laughs> so they're more so into like the weight training aspect, not the plyometric exercises, but it's fun. Shout out to the homie Giant. I'm saying day movement in New York City. Mm-hmm. We have it out here. We have Giant out here. When my homie comes out? Oh, no. I thought you said Giant. Giant. That's my buddy's name. He's from, he's from Harlem. Oh, I thought you were talking about Giant Fitness. No, no. Oh. Giant's a person. Oh. You know I'm saying? The original bartender, the creator and founder of, you know what I'm saying, physical movement on the bar. Nice. Nice, nice. I have to bring him out. Yeah, please do. So, you started your business just moving. What made you start this business? Because you wanted to lose weight? or mm-hmm. It was about me. It was selfish. It was so you you're selfish. It was so yeah. Look, you're it, selfish. I can be at that. You're selfish and you're sneaky because you be in the bushes. And I hide in bushes. bushes. <laughs> you hide bushes. You, you're selling you're selfish. Bitch. You're, you're sneaky. You're hiding in bushes and you're selfish. Yeah. Right. My intention for starting it was was selfish at the time because I knew that um, I wanted to do this. I wanted to start it at the time. I was living in Maryland and I was working in Trenton, so I needed something for my downtime. For you lived in Maryland. I was living in Maryland. Did they call you Obama? No, I was in the part that was closer to Delaware. Okay, because okay, all my DC friends call my 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 Baltimore friends Bamas. I never understood that. Uh, it's like a no. DC Baltimore battle. See, I was in the Delaware part of things, so oh, okay. it was like on that state line. On the other side. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Baltimore. Shout out to DC. Man, come on, y'all get it together. <laughs> I've never been called a Bama though. Yeah, I just everybody had like we had dead names. They're like that was just like what DC dudes would be disrespectful to Baltimore dudes. That was a dead name for them. Like yo, yeah. Can't we just get along? <laughs> I got good friends from both cities. From well, both. city and the district. I lived in Virginia for a little bit, so I'm familiar a little bit with the DMV area. But yeah, and you're, I still have... you're from you're from Jersey. I'm from Jersey. Yep. Own that. I'm from Jersey. Yep. From Jersey. Mm-hmm. I'm saying this semi stalkerish. <laughs> oh my semi-selfish. god! Semi selfish. This is yeah. <laughs> accountability though. You said accountability. You took accountability. That's what... that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you, you're running your business. Yeah. So this is my real question. Okay. How many, because I always think business. I laugh, I joke, I got plenty of stuff to say. 24 hours, my first thought is business. Mm-hmm. It used to be violence. I was so hooked on violence because that's what I thought. Now my first thought is business. Every time I hear something, I'm trying to translate it into business. Yeah. When I hear you say, I've been running this brick and mortar for two years. Right. So this is my next question. This leads to business. Did you videotape any of that two years? Yes, I did. I documented it. So what happens is your videos, I now want to get from you and put on this platform. Then I can have your your dance movements and your club setting, which is all good music. I we have to work on the music part, the licensing. Yeah. But we have, we can probably substitute the music out of something. But we have you doing your dance classes for two years on video. Oh. Yeah, I've I've... Because, like, I had to learn how to do all aspects of the business. So I, I learned to be a videographer. I learned to do video editing. I've learned to mix music. I've learned to do all of that. So we try to capture as much as we absolutely can. 
And through the process of getting the brick and mortar, the place that I got was like a abandoned dentist office. And it was, you know, it, it was a disaster inside. And I went in and I said, yeah, I want this place. And nobody understood why I wanted this box. You had a vision. I had a vision. I know I needed a floor and I knew I needed mirrors and I needed space. So that was actually perfect for me, the way the, the format and the layout was. And the thing that got me was this torn up brick wall. And for me, you know, a brick wall can always, you know, add to the element of hip hop in some way because we use it as kind of like our branding wall with our logo. So that's all I needed. The brick wall, an open space, and an area to put mirrors. So. And you're a business owner. Yes. And you're doing it. Yeah. So we have a lot of women who are watching this. And they're saying, I want to start my own business. Mm -hmm. So how, what would you suggest to them? Um, well, number one, it has to be your true calling your true passion. I think sometimes people start things because they see it working for others. Um, and then you'll always get tired or, or somewhat stagnated through that process. If it's truly in you, um, the first thing that I did was I created a plan. I was scared to go in without a plan. So I sat down by myself and I said, this is what I want to accomplish in one year. This is what I want to accomplish in two years. This is what I want to accomplish in three years. And I set a, a goal for myself that Every New Year's Eve, I, I give myself a resolution video of what I'm going to accomplish for that year coming. And I watch the video that I set the year prior to and kind of say, look, did you drop the ball? Did you stay on? What did you do? And how many hours are you going to allot to your business? Because, you know, we'll put time into everything else. Um, how many times do I pick up my phone and put time into social media as opposed to my business? So um, I would say if you want to start a business and you're a woman that wants to start the business, first make sure it's your passion. First, make sure that you have the time to allot into it because being an entrepreneur takes more time than working a general job. There are more hours that are put into that. It, it, it's nonstop. It's seven days a week, multiple hours during that day. And that determines how successful or unsuccessful you are. Gotcha. Yeah. So my next question, because again, business, marketing, advertising, every year you made a video to yourself. Yes. You still have those videos. Yes. How would you like to take those videos and have them implemented into this interview so they can see them? I can. How many do you have? Um, right now I have three. See, this is the thing. I have a face mask on in some of these videos. Oh, these are yeah. personal videos to you myself. Face mask. You're like, I you're, hold on, no. you're <laughs> stalkerish. <laughs> you're saying you're selfish. Now you got a ski mask on. <laughs> what I mean by face uh, mask. You're shifting this. You should. <laughs> Listen, I had a whole different it's thought process when I saw you. I'm like, I don't know now. It's New Year's Eve. I'm talking to myself. You know, I'm sitting there. I'm ready for the ball to drop. And I'm making a promise and a plan to myself. And this was a personal. You know how this is sounding now? <laughs> you, can you hear what you just said to me? I'm hiding out in the dark, stalking somebody. <laughs> I'm selfish. Now I'm making talking to myself with a mask on. Right. All the signs of a creative person. That's what you want to call it. Mm -hmm. I'll take it there. Listen, it's all in how you word it. It's never what you say. <laughs> That's how we're going to spit it creative. So you have three of those? Yes. They're about 30, 60 seconds? Uh, five I, minutes is a max. Five minutes max, yeah. We're going to we're gonna take those, if you give us permission, and we'll embed them into this thing so they can see your okay. trans, your transition. Okay. Yeah, so you just got to shoot those over to Dev Wade at okay. the D. Wade show in the network, and he'll magically put them in okay. where they're supposed to go. But you're going to see all three masked up videos. <laughs> it depends on how thick the mask is, okay? Is, you got I'm lighting sure. on, you're not in the dark, right? You got lighting. Well, I'm home. It's just like a casual setting. I, once again, they were they were promises to me. So it was like my own little capsule for myself. Gotcha. We're sharing personal. Transparency is what women ask for. And that's what you're getting. <laughs> you're getting transparency. I hate you. <laughs> that's encouraging. <laughs> I've done about 50 interviews. This, this is the first, first time, time you heard that. Said, I hate you. Which really means that she likes me. Yeah. It's like when you pull the girl's hair when you're a kid, I meant you liked it, and you didn't like it. <laughs> that, that's progress. Yeah. I'm saying she can't just come, because people just can't come out and say you're likable, so they say the opposite of what they really want to say. You think so? You don't really hate me. I don't hate you. So what is the opposite of not hating me? You know what? In the way of me being weird, that's what I say to people. I don't. You're weird too? I well, you're, weird. you're stalkerish. I've already you're said you're weird. I'm you're weird. selfish. Okay. You're rocking a mask and talking to yourself. All creative. You're adding. Is there anything else I need to know? <laughs> no, <laughs> not that I know of. Does I any of this have anything to do with your divorce? And it could be. <laughs> I'm just it, could, it could play a big part in it. <laughs> weird, selfish, <laughs> ducking out in the dark. Let with me, a, with let me have some water, real quick. 
I just gotta ask. <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it plays a part. So did you ask or did he ask for the divorce? I, I don't want to talk about the divorce. <laughs> I just <laughs> Okay, we're just, we're just gonna put it on you. You got rid of him, <sighs> brother. It just didn't work out. No, we're not hating on the homie. It just didn't work out. That's trying to make my life hard. <laughs> now you, you taking accountability to just then. I am. I am. I am. We're trying to make your life hard. Yeah. So, what's your next business? Where you, where's your vision for your business five years out? Oh, I actually just wrote my five year plan. I, I I'd like to expand and get another location. Uh, I actually also like a product, but I haven't settled on any of the products that I've thought about. I've, I've kind of ran through a, a few different, uh, maybe a water brand, maybe a different, um, even even looked into my own jump ropes, but nothing has settled on me. So I'm not going to move forward until I'm 100% confident in that. But I would say my first plan would be another location to kind of branch out. So you're in Jersey, so you keep it in another one in Jersey? I want to stay in Jersey, but I, you know, right now I'm in Burlington County, so I'd like a location in Camden County because prior to getting my brick and mortar when I was running space, I built uh, a customer base in the Camden County area. So for some of those people who might not necessarily want to drive all the way to there, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to miss or go without. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So get another location there. The the I need to make sure that I, whatever I create, it's able to run the exact same way it's charged up because there's a passion and an experience behind that that I don't want to kind of, I don't want to sacrifice just to branch out. So that's one of my issues: staffing. Definitely. People say, Dre, you're phenomenal. I go on stage, I speak, prisons, colleges, companies. Mm -hmm. They say, Dre, how come you don't have more of you? I'm sick because my mother only made me. Right. Other people have their own visions, attitudes, and they don't necessarily line up with mine. A hundred percent. The hardest part of business, when it was just me, it ran smoothly. Simple. But when I started bringing in other instructors or I started bringing in other people for the business, everybody's work ethic isn't the same as yours. And what I noticed because everybody's check isn't the same as yours. But it's also it could be like in no, in this situation fine. it could be. But I, what I realized is um, there's a sense of um, immediate gratification for people who are starting businesses now or people who want to get into business. Um, I'll come in. I don't want to do any of the legwork, marketing. I don't want to market myself to people. I don't want to promote myself to people. But I want a room full of people when they when I show up for my dance studio. That's not how it works. There's a lot of legwork that goes in behind the scenes. So, yeah. I'm about to be your consultant. Mm -hmm. You can hire me or not hire me after this. Right. You're saying, I, something tells me you will. You have you make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. You make more than that. Just, just say hundred thousand dollars a profit. You've been doing that for like three years now. That's your goal. That's your you make a hundred thousand. Okay. Hypothetical number, and that's what you do. So now you go to your people who don't want to work or don't have the attitude or the drive. You say, listen. I'm going to do a profit sharing. Everything over 100000 I'm splitting like this. So let's just say if they work hard enough and generate a $200,000 a year, that's $100,000 you'd have never saw. Hmm. So you say, hey, I'm going to do profit sharing, not equity stake in a company, but profit sharing every year. And each individual who participates, based on their hours of contribution, they get over 100000 This is a split. So if you did 200, now everybody has the ability to level up and get a percentage based on the extra work that they put in. You can just get your hours mm -hmm. and make your whatever you make a year, or you can get down and go hard and grind like I'm grinding, mm -hmm. push this up to 200. And now you're getting your check plus equity, plus a profit sharing space. Right. But the, the incentive still has to be that they want to see whatever it is they're working on um, flourish. So that's Money, No, 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 no. You did it because you had a selfish interest. Correct. What's their selfish interest? See, they're there. They need to find their selfish interest. Correct. It can't be the same as yours, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But somebody came in overweight or heavier than they wanted to be. Maybe their interest was to lose weight, too. Mm -hmm. But I'm working here because I get paid to work and lose weight. Mm -hmm. So that's a great thing. Right. But once they lose weight, their, their incentive or selfish interest is gone. Now, your selfish interest was to lose weight. I'm not sure if you're the way you want to be, but now making money every year and running your own business and you have vision to drag you forward is a phenomenal thing. Mm -hmm. You have to find the selfish interest of your employees, not just say you should rock with mine. Right. So minimally, money helps. So if you tell me I can make an extra 15000 or 20000 a year, mm -hmm. I can go buy that car that I want. Mm -hmm. 
well, I can go buy that house that I want. I can take the vacation I want to pay for my kid to go to school. That's my selfish interest. Right. Feed mine. Money. And yeah. then money that gets me to where I want to go. Makes sense. So I would definitely say if, you're, if your average is 100 grand, find your average for the three years span and say, put 10 grand on top of that and say, everything on top of this is profit sharing. So point. you don't lose. They have you have to minimally hit your ten thousand dollars above your average. Then the then the profit sharing kicks in. Your you, books become transparent, and their work ethic will correlate, and their outcomes will correlate to the, what they do. And you think that will hundred percent retain staff? Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. If mm -hmm. I know, if I do this work at the end of the year, I get an extra fifteen grand mm -hmm. or twenty grand, versus I just get my check and I'm not getting a Christmas bonus because it's not that type of business. So makes sense. I will work harder knowing that this is going to translate into 20 grand. That makes sense. And then once you have your six staff who do it the first time, and if they get two or three grand or five, whatever they get, it's something that they wouldn't have gotten. They get to see fruits of their labor. It's like, oh, man, that's real. It's tangible. It's going to make them push harder for next year. Because when I want something, I'm 28 years old. I'm 35 years old. I can't call mom anymore. Probably never could call mom. I want to do this thing. I now have a vehicle to generate the money to do the thing that I want. Then gotcha. I'm looking for an avenue, I'm looking for a hustle. And my hustle is included in my job. Yeah, I think that's the, th the, that's the key part. The hustle has to be included in your job. That's the, mm -hmm. They do the extra work. It dries up the revenue. And then they're going to hold each other accountable. Because my, my bonus determines how hard you work to. I'm going to encourage you to work harder so we can all make more money. All right. Incentivize with selfish interest. We have to find their selfish interest. Money. Start with money. Money is always a root. It works. Mm -hmm. A bunch of other things. Money works. And I can show you how to do interviews and break down where they're psychologically and the things that matter to them. Most of them. Sometimes money is not important. Right. But if they're working at a, a baseline job where they're getting an hourly wage, it's never enough. I don't care how, it's just never enough when you're working dollars for hours. Mm -hmm. It's never enough. And, but this is where they're comfortable and where they are. So to be able to make it more here with just a little extra work, I can just stay extra 20 minutes or actually not leave 20 minutes early or check out an hour before my checkout time. Right. Most people, if they get off at five, they stop working at four. They stop yeah. watching the clock. That is very true. <laughs> so that is very true. Maybe they just work the last hour of their day. Yeah. You don't need to stay extra. Just do your last hour working. But if I get the same check regardless, why should I work the last hour? That's true. It's your business. It's not mine. That that That's the motto, I think, yeah. Well, that's the mindset globally. However, the, um, the plan that we had at the studio was they, I, I would only bring in people who were launching their own business. So it was, they were the model that I went into having consultants there. So they would come into the studio. They had their own brand. They were utilizing the space. But the work still had to be done. So the money doesn't come unless the people are there. Right. And the people have to get there by all of the legwork that happens prior to. So I think that's where the gap was because it, it, it there was no drive or incentive to kind of say, all right, I have to get flyers done. I have to market to people. I have to be nice to people. I have to have soft skills. I have to speak. So I think that's where the gap was. But it was also a, a age thing as well where if uh, if it wasn't, just, you know, I guess social media attention or branding that way, then they necessarily weren't interested in, in building the business. It only could be. I, I would say, thing. look in your area. There's some senior homes in your area. Mm -hmm. Those senior homes, most of those folks run some kind of Medicaid or insurance right. that covers act, physical activity. So if you go to the senior home and say, hey, how many people in this building, X, Y, Z, or contact the families, you might have 300 people living in this home. You can do programs for them probably on site. You won't have to bring them to your site. Yeah. You send instructors out, pay them an hourly wait, but you have so many senior homes that you can actually facilitate this with. Which is, yeah, we do have contracts. And then there's some insurance companies that'll pay for people to attend sessions like that. So that was something along the way that I, I didn't know in the beginning and learned. Did you yeah. hire somebody whose sole job is to drive that insurance market? No, that's me. I do that. Okay. You need to hire somebody mm -hmm. whose sole job is to drive the insurance market because you're doing enrollment, you're doing rent, 
okay. you're doing repairs, mm -hmm. you're living your life, mm -hmm. you got all this other stuff. So you can't put 100% of your time into driving the insurance business. Right. which is a great revenue source. Mm -hmm. So since it's on you, that means it's not getting done or it's getting done sporadically. Correct. It gets done, but it gets done at like three in the morning. It gets done sporadically. sporadically. Mm -hmm. You hire somebody who's so focused is to drive that level of the business. You're right. And everybody that I've spoken to, like small business owners, there's so much that we're taking on on our own that you're, you're wearing all of the hats. And, you know, it could either cause uh, burnout um, or, you know, like you said, it could cause for some important tasks to be sporadically done. I have a guy, you ever heard of the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Yes. Rich Dad is my friend. Nice. The book that is, the guy that is written about, his name is Keith Cunningham. Okay. He is Rich Dad from Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay. He has an hour and a half training that is, is recorded. It's an interview. I call it a training. I make all my new staff watch. I'm going to send it to you. Okay. And I guarantee you this hour and 15 minutes would change your business world. Yeah, I'd like to see that. I'm going to send it to you. And you, can, you just watch it and be like, strategy. There's different levels to business. Mm -hmm. And most people understand what they understand and think I'm doing good in my space, but mm -hmm. there's different levels to business. Right. When I walk around downtown Philly or downtown Chicago, I see these skyscrapers and multi-billion dollar buildings. I'm like, everyone in these buildings is governed by a multi-millionaire. Mm. When you go through downtown Philly, there's hundreds mm -hmm. of buildings. New York, thousands of buildings. Every building represents millionaire conglomerates and companies. And there's systems to manage those buildings. And it's not just sent up to three o'clock in the morning trying to get it done. Right. That's that's the opposite of what the I want to do. <laughs> the so, opposite. Like I said, you might consider hiring me as your consultant. Oh, okay. I said you don't have to, but you just might. The resume is real. The I, I listen, I don't question the resume at all. You still hate me? I don't. I, yeah and no, but we're not making really, progress, y'all. We're making progress. We went from I hate you to <laughs> hate you. Yeah, no. I just listen because um, aside from the whole crazy, who's crazy? Who's side? Well, everyone's crazy. You are well, talking about you? Not me. I don't think we I'm. We don't talk about people that ain't here. I don't talk about people. I got a thing. I don't talk about people that ain't in the room. I'm very sane in the in the in the fact of. Um, when it comes to business conversations, I appreciate those because there's always things that I learn from people who have had their business, whether they still have it, whether they're starting another one. There's so many conversations that I don't get to have with business owners. So I received everything that you said. So gotcha. well, for the record, I am a consultant for probably 300 of the biggest businesses on the planet. Hmm. A resume. Oh yeah. Resume matters. Resume matters. Listen, resume matters. <laughs> So with that, we're going to come by the studio. We're going to implement and embed your three masked up New Year's resolutions. Did I promise yes, that did. on camera? I did. I mean, you I agree did. to that. I asked and you said yes. I also said. Don't tell me you're a liar, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Liar, crazy stalker, masked up videos, talking to yourself. Come on, man. <laughs> Uh, you started out so well upstairs. I, had, I know it was just. But I was like, "Wow, she's phenomenal." <laughs> and then I came down here. And you came and started talking. I'm in bushes <laughs> of crazy. All right, I, I, I made a promise. I'll keep my promise. That's important. Very. I'm saying so many people watching this show. I've had people promise me stuff and not deliver. Mm -hmm. So we can't let our folks down. We can't replicate what they've dealt with in the past or what I've dealt with in the past. People making false promises. Yeah. But I am so glad you came. Thank you for having me. And thank you for allowing me to come to your to your dance studio. Yeah. I'm bringing my son when he comes this summer. My son will be visiting from London. Nice. So I'm going to fly him up and bring him to the studio so he can go dance with the youngins. Right. And what are you going to do? I'm come choose up on old ones. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, go do it? Like, yeah. <laughs> I love it. See, that's something that right there tells me. Yes, you could still break. I already know it. I, I, let's see. Why are you looking? <laughs> Why did you just battle the air and then look at me? Now freeze. <laughs> Don't get me started. I know, right? I'm saying I might I throw it. a hip out of stuff. I love I, it. I, I can't afford to get injured. No, 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 no. You I don't roller skate anymore because if I twist my ankle, I can't go to work. Once you once you break, you can always break. No, no. Once I break something, it's I can't break. get on stage. <laughs> that's true. If I don't get on stage, there's a problem. Yeah, that's a liability now. Yeah, I don't roller skate anymore. I don't skateboard anymore. I don't roller skate either. Fine. 
because if I, I need my legs. So you feel me? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't battle. I don't break dance anymore. If I twist something, break something, I'm up for three weeks. Can't make money sitting in the bed. Yes, I can, but I don't want to make money like that. No. Right. I, had I would have never met you if I'd have been home with a broke ankle. That, that's true. I had a prior injury that kind of has restricted me now for some things that I hyperextended my knee. And, you know, a knee injury is like. Last thing before we go. A lot of folks, men and women watching this, say she got her business started. It's actually up and running. It's making money. She's loving it. She's living. She's growing. You're a consultant. Uh, You're an advisor to 500,000 people who are going to want to hear from you. Wow. That fast, that simple. Well, listen, any way I can help, any information that I can give, because like I said, especially with me opening it in the middle, the brick and mortar in the middle of the pandemic, you know, that, that to me was like one of the scariest things. But if I heard you got a great, you got a great rent. That's what I heard. Great rent. No, you, they didn't. They didn't care because they didn't they, give you better they, rent. I negotiated. They tried not to give me a good rent because they were already in debt from prior things. But you know, I negotiated a, a really, really good rent. That's exactly what I said. Mm -hmm. I heard good. You got a good rent deal out of it. They tried to hustle. They listen. If you if you allowed them to, if you took the first offer, they would try to hustle. Them. Ladies and gentlemen, your next consultant, the dance instructor, the fabulous, the wonderful. The all knowing, the queen of New Jersey. You know what I'm saying? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Prison of Millions. I am your host. This is our guest. And we will see you soon, but not you. So, this is New Year's Eve on uh, December 31st, 2021. We are going into 2022. Uh, CG, great job this year. Um, going into the new year, stabilize your business, the studio. Good business only. If people can't hold their weight, they can't be around you. No more um, probable instructors. They have to have drive and they have to be willing to work for themselves. Still open to great partnerships. Um, and mastering the accounting and the business side. I want you to complete your grant writing course and I want you to apply for grants. I want you to go after money that's out there for you so that these funds are not coming out of your pocket. Be more diligent, be more focused. Love you and Happy New Year.